Reveal yourself through your word unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Uh, I have something that I would like to uh, share. And I pray that uh, God may open your heart. And this is especially for believers. And here is the thing. If you are to give a title to this sermon, it says, how do we overcome sin? Or how we overcome sin? How do we overcome the lusts of the flesh? How do we overcome? How, how am I able 
to conquer the addictions of my life. I mean, I try, I wake up in the morning with a consciousness that I'm not going to do something, then I find myself doing the same very thing that I don't like to do. Is there a way where I can utterly, completely overcome this the sin I come to say to you that God says yes it is and he's not judging you but he's wanting to help you he wants to help us all he wants to help me just as much as he wants to help and so we are going to learn how we overcome sin how, we, how, how God has how God has set a way for us to overcome the addictions of life I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of struggle you're having. I don't know whether it's it's drugs, masturbation, habitual fornication. I don't care what you call it. I, I, I don't care whether it's 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 homosexuality. There is no sin that's greater than the power of God. When the power of God works in you, it's able to take away everything. Because whom the Son sets free is not only free for a little while, but he's free indeed. Praise the Lord. So yes, we are able to overcome sin. And the scripture has not left us in the dark about this matter. Father, we welcome you through your Holy Spirit to minister to us. And may your Holy Spirit teach. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says, Bible I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will, you will certainly not. I would like you to underline that word in your Bible if you are, uh, have the ability to. You will certainly not. You shall not carry out the desire of the flesh. This is a guarantee. It is a guarantee. Has, isn't it interesting that today in church we have focused so much on telling people don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, stop this, stop that. And the more we tell them to stop these things and they seem like the more they end up doing. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of the Romans that the law actually awakened the desire of sin in me. In other words, when the don'ts and don't and don't and don't keep on coming, is the urge of the sinful nature also arises to go against That's it. That's why the Bible clearly tells us that actually the law was there to expose the don'ts are there to expose how sinful we are because the more you are trying to do it actually the more you fail 
tu gamanti eteka uriari wao kula gomubi oba jetwa koma kupenda bono ne fukubanga jetwa koma gamato chiko la jetwa koma ngopono na. Because the law functions in the realm of your own ability. Kubanga eteka di kore na mama nyoba mochifeta mani goba bumbuso bosi. You wake up in the morning and you say I am not going to do this thing and it's the first thing you do thirty minutes. Okay, na kumata no gamanti sike na kola chino ne mo dachi kanto no chokola tenyi. You said today I make I make up my mind I shall not lie anymore and before you know it a lie has just come okay, up okay na kuma no sija kulimba chintu chona nenga tona ba natima nyoba wa mazendo kulimba and you were a believer nenga tori mukiriza i am not here to judge you siri wano kusalira but i'm here to bring hope nendi wano lete suri to tell you that god has a way to deliver us from these perpetual afflictions kugamanti mukama ine kuwe ngeri yo kutusumulula mbine ebibye byabulisha and it's simply era chidi Walking by the spirit. Titambulira mumoyo. Walking by the spirit is so deep and wide. Okutambulira mumoyo chigazera cha buzima. And I cannot teach everything that has been shown to me about it. In, within this summer. But let's understand that the way we overcome the lusts and the desires of the flesh is walking by the spirit. Naye tutitegere ntengeri okaje tuwangula mukugomba ko mbili ja fenga tutambulide moyo. The only way you are going to be able if you uh, if you struggling say with bitterness. Tuengeri okaje ogenda okusobola katugambe ngo oyinobukawu. And you want to bear the fruit of love. Erango yagala okubale ekibale ekyokwagala. Remember love is the fruit of the spirit. Jukira nchyo kwagala kibala cha moyo. Patience is the fruit of the spirit. All the things that you desire to have and be are fruits of the spirit. And it's only when you walk by the spirit that you shall bear the fruit of the spirit. Are you following me? These things that we desire to have are fruits of the spirit. And the fruit cannot be without casting see a fruit just doesn't just show up there is a seed that's cast in the ground that's watered on and there is a seed time and eventually this tree bears fruit but walking by the spirit also has steps to it but the most important thing is to be diligent in, in the journey Praise the Lord. So he says, walk by the Spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. Let me, let me first give you this understanding. Man is about threefold. Man is a spirit. Now I'm talking about a believer. Because a believer is a different thing. If you have believed the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior, accepted him in your heart, this is who you are. You were born by the Holy Spirit, the incorruptible word of God. Now you are a spirit. Now that spirit has a soul, has a mind and that's the place of the seat of our emotions and making of decisions and conception of things you, you, you are not a mind but you have a mind you, you are spirit with a soul and then that, 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 that spirit soul sit in a body so the body is like the caboose it's like a container that's very important for you to first understand you as a believer are a spirit that which is born of flesh is flesh that is for the non-believers at one time we were flesh and when the 
Bible is talking about flesh, it doesn't mean this flesh. It talks of the carnal senses. If you have been born by if you have been born by flesh, you have senses. And every man who has senses but has not yet connected with God only walks by the senses, the carnal, the flesh. And God has shown us that they that walk by the flesh shall surely die. What does it mean? They that walk by the cravings of their senses shall surely die. And this doesn't mean the dying of the flesh. It talks of a spiritual death and much more. Praise the Lord. So, in other words, now, when you became born again, you were just like Jesus who was born by the Spirit, you were also born of the Spirit. Remember, God is holy and cannot sit in an holy place. And so for him to be able to sit and dwell in you, he had to create a spirit in true righteousness and holiness, the Bible says. So your spirit is as holy and righteous as it shall eternally be. So in other words, if you are a spirit, you are as holy and righteous as you shall eternally be. So only one third of you is holy and sanct uh, and sanctified and just justified. The two are awaiting for that glorious day. To also, they were bought and purchased by the blood. But they have not yet been redeemed. It's like you going to a shop and you make a deposit and the, you get a promissory note. And then you know that one day you will come and get your goods. So Jesus, he bought us, purchased us, not just the spirit but the whole being by his blood. But the redeeming is coming at a time. But nonetheless, in the meantime, he has given us a spirit. Which spirit is created in his righteousness and his holiness. And that's the reason why God now can dwell in that spirit. Are you following? But the spirit has a mind, a soul. And they are in a flesh. Now because the, the, the flesh is still struggling with the desires. This is how God desires the three to operate. Your, 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 your soul, your mind is, is the central processing unit of your life. That's where decisions are made. Before you became born again and you were just a soul within a body, the soul only depended on the lusts of your, of, of, of your senses to make decisions. So when you wanted to kill, the soul only relied on the flesh to make a decision. But now you being a regenerate, you now have something greater. You have a new creature that is the spirit. Now the, the, the soul has, according to God, 
to obey the spirit and then when your solemn mind obeys the spirit then it instructs the flesh on how to live the, 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 the soul is no longer relying on the flesh it now looks unto the spirit which is in because within that spirit is God within that spirit is the Holy Spirit within that spirit is the greatness and the fruit of the spirit but it's not so beneficial to only sit in the spirit it's like having a, let me use an illustration it is like having uh, having a tank, a water tank, and you have the bucket. The bucket being the flesh, the water tank being the spirit. And in between the tank and the bucket, you have a conduit or you have a tap. A faucet. You, you, you have a conduit that transfers. That conduit is the spirit. Uh, is the soul between the spirit and the bucket the flesh now everything resident the clean water fresh wonderful water can be resident in the tongue but the bucket won't benefit it if it's only resident in the tongue when that bucket sits there for uh, for quite a long time, eventually cobwebs will even uh, will even be built in. It will remain empty. Yet the water is filled in the tank. And eventually even the conduit will start to get rusty. The only thing that can guarantee the outpouring is when the conduit opens up to that water and the water flows from the filled tank and it comes into the bucket that the bucket can now enjoy what's in the tank. Walk by the spirit. Without the spirit, you will be empty like the bucket. You will continue gratifying the desires of the flesh. Pastors will tell you stop sinning. And you feel excited in the moment. And the next day you will do the same thing you don't want to do. Because you are doing it in the flesh by itself cannot save itself. You need to open up the conduit such that water flows the life of Christ flows that's within you and it goes through your mind through your soul and your soul makes a decision that I'm only yielding to the spirit and then it shall instruct the flesh to follow there is a law by scripture that at the testimony of two or three let a word be established now when your spirit and your soul agree to a matter the body has to follow there is no way in your spirit you can ever desire to do the lusts of the flesh the spirit it's not in the spirit to sin it's not in the spirit to lie because the spirit is created after remember after it's created after God in true righteousness that means there is a false righteousness in true holiness that means there is a false holiness the false holiness and false righteousness is when the bucket when the body tries to do things by its own self to think that by doing good it's fixing issues 
But listen, all you need is to connect to. And let all the riches and the wealth and the love and, and the peace and the joy and the kindness that is already within your spirit to flow through the conduit of your soul into the bucket of the body. That man shall not struggle. Because the body is yielded to the spirit. But the spirit is not created to yield to the body. In fact, the Bible says the spirit is an enmity to the flesh. The two don't, don't mix. And that is why there is that in between the soul who makes the decision. But he can either go to the way of the flesh or go to the way of the spirit. But I implore that right now you should get the meditations of your heart, your soul, your mind to yield to the spirit. In fact, let's continue reading that verse. It goes to verse 17. It says, the bucket, the flesh desires what's against the spirit. Are you saying? And the spirit desires what's against the flesh. In other words, the flesh is functioning in the realm of darkness. Darkness brought about by Satan. The spirit functions in the way of light. Light means knowledge. And God is light. And the Bible says when light, in the book of the beginnings, it says when light, darkness could not comprehend. Because in the beginning, the world was without form. The world darkness was on the face of the deep. But guess what happened? The spirit of God brooded like a chicken would brood her, her, her chicks. Like a hen would brood his, her chicks. And then after that brooding, that's the same way the Holy Spirit brooded over the womb of Mary. That is the same way the Holy Spirit Spirit brooded over your life when you became born again. And after brooding, just like the, 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 the hen would brood over her eggs, there was the birth of light. And when light comes, you have never seen a mixture of light darkness. It's either light or darkness. There is no gray area. But darkness has never been, there's never been any greatness of darkness that comprehends light. So the light that is within you, when it shines, it overpowers darkness. It overpowers the desires of the flesh. It says the spirit desires what's against the flesh. And the Bible says these are opposed to each other. So that your flesh doesn't do what you really want to do. And then when you go, I believe, to 18. But it says ye. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. What it means, you are not going to be just fighting in your own words to overcome sin. Because the law is in the realm of working with your own works. But the Spirit is in the realm of God working in you both to will and to obey. Whereby even you're willing, it's God willing in you. Even when you are obeying, it's God obeying in you. 
When you are in the flesh, it's you working in the law, in the work. But when you are led in the spirit, God is working through and in you. He says if you are led by the spirit, you are not under works. And the next verse says, the next verse. Now the works of the flesh, they are obvious. Some of, some of, some of us might be struggling with these things. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealous, outbursts, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. All those kinds of sin are the works of the flesh. And when man shall surely walk by flesh, they shall surely die because the wages of sin is death. Are you now seeing? When man is walking by flesh, it means they are walking in their own ability. Thinking in their own nature and ability, they will be able to overcome sin. But if man is walking by the Spirit, it means man is only a vessel. And it's God working in him both to will and to obey. And such a man, God starts to desire through that man. God cannot desire envy. Now let's get to the next part and you see. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. In other words, God is love. Love is just Him. He doesn't have love. He is love. He doesn't have life. He is life. He doesn't have a way. He is the way. In other words, when you walk in the spirit, love oozes out. God is joyful. Now you can connect this to the prayer that Jesus told. In the manner in which they should pray. Not a prayer they should recite. But only as a model. That your kingdom comes. Your will be done on earth. Remember you and I are part of the earth. In other words, the will of God as it is in heaven starts to operate and function in you also as a member of the earth. Why do I say that you two are earth? Because you were, your body was created out of the earth. In other words, there comes a place where God, God's will is now operating in your body. What's his will? That joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, as all these things which are in heaven, he wills that they come through the conduit of your soul to the bucket of the body. That is how we overcome sin. The Bible says the law is not against such things. In, in other words, your efforts of trying to do a thing is actually trying to achieve the same thing. That's why it's not against it. But the means are wrong. You only yield to a spirit. And then you overcome. Glory to God. Uh, verse 24. Now, 
those who belong to Christ Jesus, which is you and I we have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires here is the mystery when Jesus was crucified the Bible says we were baptized into his death in other words it wasn't only him being crucified the desires passions of the flesh were being crucified because only when a seed dies can life spring up remember death is a magnet to life the only way you can get a harvest is when a seed is buried in the ground your flesh for it to see the fruits of the spirit manifest it has to die are you following the way of God some has to die for life to come do you realize why death came into the world yes it was because of sin but do you realize why God found it necessary for death to be there as a result of sin let me open your eyes when you go to the book of beginnings in the garden was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and good and bad the reason why God chased Adam and Eve from the garden is that they may not be able to eat of the tree of life. Because in their fallen state had they eaten of the tree of life, there would have been no death. This is what it means. A man who is born crippled would have been crippled. Cancer would have been for eternity. All the fruits of sin that come would have been there forever because there is no death. But when death comes, there is hope for a resurrection. There is hope for renewal. That's why it necessitated that Jesus die. He had to carry the sin. He had to carry your struggle, your addictions, put them on his shoulder, and then die, crucify them, and then get alive and give you his life. Oh, what a transaction! Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by spirit, let us also, let us also keep in step with the spirit. Let's go to 26. It says, let us not become considered provoking one another, envying one another, whenever you do, do those things you are walking in the realm of the flesh are, 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 are you being blessed Romans chapter 6 verse 12 Romans chapter 6 verse 12 from the amplified classic amplified I like how it's written. It says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. Do not let sin rule in, in, in your body. Uh, do not let sin rule as king in your mortal body. Your body is short-lived, perishable. It's, you, you see, the scripture is telling us that when it rules as, as kings, it makes us yield to its cravings. What does it mean? For as long as the body is not yet redeemed, those cravings will come. Those passions will come. 
The coming is because of their nature, or of the nature of the body. The coming, the coming of those things is only because of the nature. God is not concerned about that. He knows that they come. Don't you know that Jesus too was tempted in all ways? But here is the defining mark. It's when they come, will you yield to them? The coming, I mean trials and testations will come. Will you yield to them? Yes, your body is not yet redeemed and these passions come. When you yield to them, then you've let them be king. But then when you yield to the spirit, the spirit will be king over flesh. The Bible tells us somewhere that to whom you yield to, you become a slave to. Whether unto sin, whether to sin unto death or whether unto uh, spirit unto life. So what's the problem here? Is the yielding. Who do you yield to? It doesn't mean you are not going to have those things come to you. But it's when you now respond to them. When you give to them. Praise the Lord. So he says do not give. Praise the Lord. And verse 13. It says do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members uh, and faculties to sin as instruments, tools of wickedness. But this is what you should do. Offer and yield yourself to God as though you have been raised from the dead. You see? You have been raised from the dead to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In other words, there is a responsibility. A craving can come. Let me use this illustration. Your soul is always in a state of having to make a decision. It's like you being in a very critical place. And one decision will define everything. And you have two individuals. One of the flesh and one of the kernel. One of the flesh brings to you a certain report. And he says, follow it. And according to worldly wisdom, it looks good. And then because these two are enemies, the other individual of the spirit will come and say, no, do it this way. This is always before you make, don't be quick to take decisions. Don't be quick to take decisions. Don't be quick for your soul's mind to, to make a decision. When, 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 when the lust of the flesh came and there is also a word that comes from God, your mind should position itself in this understanding. That first of all, the way of the spirit is better. In fact, it's best it's greater than the way of the flesh. 
The way of the spirit is by God, the way of the flesh is the devil. The way of the spirit is life, the way of the flesh is, is death. The Bible says he has set life before you and death. But he tells you to choose life. To live by the spirit is life. So he's telling you choose the way of God. How does it relate in that way? So you are going to feel a chi craving. You are going to feel a chi passion to do something. You're going to feel like you should have this outburst of anger. But let your mind know that yes, I feel that, but I choose not to yield to you. God has instructed me to do otherwise. God has instructed me to love, to be patient, to be kind, regardless of how I feel. I go by what is true. The reason why we are challenged in this age today is that we are carried by feelings, not truth. Let me say something very important and please pay attention to me. And remember this all the days of your life. Feelings can be factual. Can be factual. But they are no be truthful. But they are not truth. Feelings can be factual. But they are not truth. The reason why they are not truth is because truth never changes. Truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Truth never wavers. Feelings waver. Today you feel happy. Tomorrow you feel sad. Today you feel sick. Tomorrow you feel well. Tomorrow you're feeling high. The other you're feeling downcast. When you respond to feeling, you're responding to facts, but they are not truth. But when you respond to truth, regardless of feeling, you will enjoy life. You will enjoy life. And I mean, I don't mean life on earth, drinking and feasting. I mean life in God. In fact, you will enjoy eternal life. Do you know what eternal life is? I find many believers and you ask them what's eternal life and they say to be with God in heaven forever. No. That's, that's part of eternal life but that's not eternal life. The Bible tells us that that it, this is eternal life to know the one true God. In other words, to, to have fellowship with God is already life eternal. When you continually read the word of God and put it in you, you are walking by the Spirit. When you apply the principles of the word of God, you are walking by the Spirit. When you set yourself outside public opinion and you only go by the opinion of God, you are going, you are led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit cannot lead you against the Word of God. So the Bible says, test the Spirit. And you know how you can test the Spirit? It's only with the Word of God. You feel like you want to do something, but if the Word of God tells you that that is not a pleasing thing to God, you will know that whatever you are feeling is of the spirit of the devil. Because God cannot give you a feeling that is against his word. So when you apply 
I walk and apply and have continual fellowship with God, you are, that is the walking in the Spirit. When you start to see things not according to the canal, but you see things through the lenses of Scripture, that means you are walking, you are seeing by the Spirit. When you decide to make every decision based on what the Spirit leads in the Word, you are then deciding by the Spirit. Then and only then shall you not gratify the desires of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. James chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says, Submit yourself to God. Subject yourself to God. In other words, you completely and wholly give yourself as a slave to God. That means what he says you do. Everything he instructs you to do according to his scripture you do. You only go by his leading. You only only go by his instruction, not the world opinion. When you subject yourself to God, you will have resisted the devil. How do we resist the devil? Remember the example I gave you? The devil works with the flesh. Now when your mind submits wholly unto the spirit and unto God, regardless of the communication of, of, of the devil his words will become deaf to you. you will be deaf to them I mean no matter whatever insult you speak to a deaf man they cannot even understand what you're saying it does not affect them so they don't even take offense because they don't understand what you're saying they don't understand your language that is what it means to be dead to the flesh whereby you don't understand the, the language of the flesh you only understand the language of the word of God that's how you overcome sin and when you do that the devil is resisted and eventually he flees you don't flee he flees Praise the living God. Ooh, let's end with this one. Yeah. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 21. Colossians chapter 1 verse 21. Give it to me in the CSP. <laughs> it says... Once upon a time, you believers were alienated and hostile in your minds, expressed in your evil actions. This is what happened. But now, what has happened? God has reconciled you by his physical body through his death to present you holy, faultless, and you know what? Give it to me in the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. It says, yet, yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. In other words, when Jesus died, God was, you weren't reconciling yourself to him. God was reconciling you to himself when Jesus died. You know what, Brother Julius? 
this is the reason why. Because God is righteous. Jesus is righteous. But then Jesus gave you his righteousness. And he took your sin and desires and struggle. So when he went to the cross, God the Father must have even turned his birth. But in giving him his back, he was looking for the righteous. Now, ye were given the righteousness. At that moment, he got now the right. The righteousness of Christ that was on Christ was now given unto you. And God got you like he was getting Christ to himself. Are you following? And then he brought you unto himself through Christ's death. Because in the dying is killing your desires and passions. Then the Bible says as a result when he, when he reconciled you he brought you into his own presence. And this is what I love the most. It says, and you were holy. And you were blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Believer, you should learn this truth. This is how God sees you. He doesn't see you through the flesh. He sees you through the spirit created in holiness and righteousness. And he sees you as one who is already holy. You are not working to be holy. When the Bible says be holy, as God is holy, there is a realm of holiness it's talking about. But there is already a holiness in which you already established in. And it says you were blameless. That's why it says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he has cast away your sins. Oh, praise the living God. Regardless of the struggles you have, God is seeing you through the spirit he gave in you that you are blameless. And he says as you stand before him without a single fault, you are faultless. Quit saying I'm a sinner. You were a sinner now saved by grace. And the Bible says, consider yourself this way. It starts from the renewing of mind. Men struggle because they have not exercised themselves to already see themselves as holy and blameless before God. When you see yourself that way, you, you start to see the passions of the world as inferior. You see yourself as a prince. You see yourself as a child of God. And everything that does not operate in heaven, you look at it as a lower degree. So sin starts to be a lower degree. Even when your body craves, you look at it laughingly and you check and you say, hey, hey, I no longer live that way. Because I am holy, I am blameless without a single fault. That is why he says, those that he has given me, none shall pluck them out of my hand. You are guaranteed heaven. You are in fellowship with God. But the Bible says, renew your mind. Consider yourself this way. Wake up in the morning and say, God, I thank you. Because I didn't deserve it. But I know. Because of Christ's death, I am given his righteousness. And you have brought me in your presence. And I am holy. I am blameless. Not because 
because of my works. Now this is what will happen. When you see yourself that way, the soul will agree with the spirit and the body will obey and you will find that the things you have struggled with for a long time, they are no longer in you. You will even forget the day when you last drank. You will forget the last day with the last day you even took that drug. Because God has given you his heart. He has taken the heart of stone out of you. And every desire in you is his desire. Every will in you is his will. Every obedience is you in you is his obedience. And he shall carry you by the spirit. Until glory. That's how we overcome sin. Consider yourself as one that God has justified and sanctified. The only responsibility you have is to always walk in that consciousness. Always walk in that consciousness. Always walk in that consciousness. The Bible says, As man thinketh, so he is. It means you are what you think. No, it doesn't mean like when you think a potato, now you're a potato. No, the word for thinking there is, is, is like the opening of a door. The Greek word is shall all. Like how you open a door. When you open the door, whatever you deposit in, eventually you become. In other words, you are an amalgamation of things that you have thought about, digested and conceived that you open the gates to to come into your soul. So what it means is when you consider every day, you only meditate and think that you are holy, you are beautiful, you are loved, you see the goodness of God and even when you have been struggling and you only consider what God has done in you, eventually that is what you become. God has delivered some. I believe God has delivered me. If you want to give your life to Christ and you've been you've been blessed by this sermon and you want you want God to carry you by his spirit and 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 and, and fulfill his purpose in you. I just want to, you to know that he loves you. What he did for others, he did for you as well. The salvation plan of our God, our Father, our Daddy included you. You are no mistake. I know you could have murdered someone. The world has a way of, of, of judging you. All right, mm. and 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 God has a way of reconciling you to Himself. Know ye not that while we were sinners, God loved us so much that He sent His Son to die while we were sinners. So while you have been struggling with that thing, God loved you. Anyway. Because what you're struggling with is a piece of cake for Him only if you yield to Him. He says, Just come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden. And I'll give you 
Let's pray. Say this if you want to accept Jesus in your life. Say, Father, I thank you because you love me. I thank you because you became flesh so you could buy and purchase me. I thank you because you have opened these truths to me. And I know you, you love me with an everlasting love. I make a decision today to accept you, to let you be the Lord of my life and rule and be king in my life. I know that Jesus came on earth. He died for my sins. He was raised to glory and soon is coming for me. I not only know it but I believe it. I believe it in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Not just the Lord of the world but the Lord of my life. I am born again. God, I, I ask you that through your spirit you should teach me your way because the Holy Spirit is a teacher. A lot that I know not but I trust in your teaching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We encourage you to write to us and we shall share some resources or if you are connected, find a Bible-believing church that does not share the filtered gospel but the unfiltered word of God and you shall be blessed. Glory to God. Amen.